going to actually have to take this into the uh, video player I have, kind of edit out some of this stuff, and get it ready for uh, broadcast later on on the uh, YouTube channel. It's a good thing there's a microphone mute button too. <laughs> the, the sounds you've been hearing earlier, you know, don't want those coming back. You're, you're streaming, you know. I know. I, I did tell them that we're going to goof around a little bit for a few minutes while we wait to get everything oh. settled out and make sure that the, uh, the stream <laughs> is functioning correctly, you know. Good. You got me worried there for a second. We already have questions falling in. Already? The bridge does not connect to the suite properly right now. No, it's, not yet. It's one of those things we're working on. Uh, yeah. It'll be coming, but it's it's not it's not a thing yet. Everything is coming down the pipe eventually. Everything. Everything. Literally everything. Alright, let me refresh the stream so I can see what we're doing here before we actually pull the trigger and start this little session of ours. You know one thing I want to do too is uh start uh essentially like getting a better sound system for this computer just to uh maybe deepen up my voice a little bit that'd be kind of cool <laughs> i do i hate you want to deepen up your voice no not not to the movie announcer level hello everyone and welcome to the quixel live stream <laughs> <laughs> we should hire you as a ventriloquist or something <laughs> so what what yeah you know a little linus puppet talking to yourself making odd sounds. Oh, okay. All right. All yeah. right. I was thinking of a mime for some reason. No, and I was like, no, wouldn't no, that be... No. The... No? Oh, no. Yeah. no. Mimes and ventriloquists are completely different things. Yes. 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 You should... I would... I'm surprised you don't know that off the top no, of No, I head. do know that. It just it just got confused in my head. Ventriloquist is the puppet guy. I, I know You know is. that they just called you uh, Duke Nukem, right? <laughs> I am Duke Nukem. Don't say the bubblegum line. I don't want to hear that on this thing. I will cut it out. I will I will completely cut that out of this at the, in the Can end. Can I rip their heads off? Uh, yeah, let's not say that either. In fact, let's say oh. nothing that he would say, because I really don't want oh. to offend anyone today. If anybody of you want to be offended, contact me in private, and I will happily... Check, um, check Skype real quick before we start. Roger. You got that? So. <clears throat> anyway. So it's about 3.30. I guess we'll start here in a minute. Um, little background. I am Jonathan. Uh, you guys might know me as Synesthesia on Polycount. I've been there for a little while. Um, I run the Quixel Suite slash Megascan subforum. Um, you'll see me poking around a couple of the places there. I run the two Facebook groups as well. Um, pretty much all over the place. Uh, I'm sure at least two or three of you have tagged me so far on, 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 on my phone, uh, which is, continues to buzz, which I probably should put on silent because I don't think we want to hear that while we're trying to do this. So I will take care of that now. There we go. So I can focus for once because my phone never stops buzzing. I think uh, <laughs> I think Billy has the same problem too, where his, his uh, phone's vibration feature is now broken from how many people have started uh, messaging him re <laughs> regularly. So uh, yeah. But it's a good thing, because I can just write it off my taxes and get a new phone. So, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah. So, you guys, uh, obviously, everybody is aware that we have released Mega Scans, which is... Let me tell you, I'm so happy it's done, because <laughs> there were so many roadblocks before. And it's just such a nice feeling to have it out there. The only problem with it being out there is that the uh, the volume of, of uh, support that we were pushing before is now being... Uh, well, it's 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 a little bit more challenging now to to reach everybody and and stay in contact as much as I used to. Uh, for those of you guys who aren't new, you you may recall the uh, frequent hangout sessions and stuff that were happening before uh, with the release of Mega Scans. That is definitely not as possible as it used to be. Um, but I'm doing my best to try to keep you guys engaged and happy. So if there's anything you can suggest or any ideas that you have for us, you know. By all means, please let me or anyone else at the company know we are more than you know willing to improve anything for you guys. Uh, that being said, I wanted to touch base on Studio. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who 
would like to see some of the potential it has. Uh, I am by no means a master of the tool. Uh, I've only been using it for the past six months myself. Because, um, you know, of course, we, we all have access to all these private builds here before they even became public. So it's changed a lot in the past, um, <laughs> in the past several versions. Uh, the current one now is, I mean, just phenomenal. How quickly you can create materials and, and uh, the ease of which you can you can basically do anything you want. And uh, today, I'm kind of doing a lead into a project that some of the guys at Quixel, including Billy and uh, Owen, who you may know is the the man working on some of the trees and the uh, studio stuff on the uh, tools group, developing a. I think I think it was an icy environment right now, which sexy <laughs> sexy snow. I, I know it doesn't look fantastic, mm -hmm. and that's and you can tell if you look at it closely enough, you can actually see which scans he used to build it. But um, oh yeah. They're uh, they're working with me in a collaboration to essentially build a an environment for this locomotive that I built early this year, which was also streamed heavily, by the way. And um, I've got the Unreal scene up currently. This is a really huge work in progress. I have not had much time to do anything with it aside from put some rock down, and, and most of this is all mega scanned. Um, some things in here need to be adjusted and changed. Um, the centerpiece, of course, is going to be this. Um, I'm going to have train cars in here, uh, foliage, all sorts of stuff. And I've got a an environmental concept art that I'd like to work from that I'll share with you guys. So you can kind of see where I'm trying to go with this session today. I just, there we go. <laughs> so I'm trying to essentially place this inside of the place where I live, which is in Orlando. And we don't really have mountains like this, or even hilltops, or I don't even know if it's fair to call that a mountain. It's a hill. That's a hill, isn't it? Linus? This is a little slope. A little uh, slope. Us Flatlanders would not know what these things are called. So, <laughs> um, This is the concept I found in ArtStation, which I think is fantastic as a starting point. So what I want to do is build some materials to actually populate into this environment. Because if you go back to the actual Unreal scene itself, I haven't done too much with the ground yet. I've laid out some rocks. I've laid out train tracks. I have laid out ferns and whatnot that Billy and Owen have created and some 3D mega scanned assets over here in the corner, but this is all just a really, really rough block out for the time being. And I need to bring this environment to life, because if anything in here doesn't stand up to the... the uh, if, if everything isn't of similar quality, then it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. And pretty much today what I want to do is get a nice library of material set up that I can just quickly populate into this environment and start getting done, because I'd like to finish this thing by Christmas at the latest. So. What I've done is I've actually gone on Google, and I've looked up the uh, the area around which I live, uh, and there's plenty of forested places here uh, with its own unique look and feel. Um, and none of this is anything you'd want to walk through. Uh, as a Florida native, I'll tell you this stuff sucks. <laughs> it is sharp, it is prickly, it hurts, but it looks cool. You just don't want to walk through it. Um, there's kind of like kissing a bearded man. Uh, no, no, I think I'd rather kiss a bearded guy than walk through this stuff. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, man. Those palmetto bushes have razor sharp edges. Um, there's like prickly vines all over the place. And you got to watch out. There might be an alligator in the bushes. Or if, if it's not a gator, it's like venomous snakes, uh, like coral snakes and, and uh, moccasins and all of the crap. And, you know, there's really no safe place in this state to get away from something that might try to kill you. Um, it's it's not Australia by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely not a place you want to like live out in the environment. And but since uh, since these uh, train rails tend to cut through areas like this, I'm going to use these uh, images as a kind of a basis from which to generate the environmental textures that I want to work with. So um, pretty much what's going to happen here, guys, is I will take requests. So while I'm working, if you want to see anything else that we can make with these scans. I can actually go to the website at any point, grab anything you'd like to see, and I can start mixing it together. Um, Linus here will field questions from the chat. Uh, it's also going to be moderated as well. I'll do my best to keep up with it myself, but I have <laughs> a ton of stuff to keep up with while I'm trying to talk, so he'll probably relay most of these questions to me. So um, yeah, this is all about you guys, so you know, I do have a focus I'd like to focus on, but if you guys would like to look at anything else, by all means. Um, let me know, and I will do my best to accommodate you. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to try to do is get some of this clay, kind of like a, a quick 
a quick build up because like you can tell this is just like it's not much to it it's clay with some rocks scattered in it and of course the library itself has like this stuff all over the place so it's really easy to find and work with so even some of these free assets are actually good for this um, now if this was all going to be uh, completely <sighs> What's the best word I'm trying to look for here? If this is going to be made with the free assets, I probably could even pull it off then. But as a staffer, I have access to pretty much everything on the site, so I can make anything I want with it. So I can kind of see that this is something I'd want to work with as kind of a base. So I'm going to grab this clay. And I've got a decent connection speed here, so I'll grab all this stuff and kind of look at it real quick. And grab this. And then go back into Studio. Now I like this as a base for that clay that I'm working with. And while we're waiting for the download in the background, I might actually have a couple pieces in here I can add to it to try to build that out. Oh, look at that. That's an old material. Boom. I need to remove those. This is probably old, too. Yep. The old beta materials will not transfer over. And I should have paid attention to that before I started the stream. So that's my mistake. All right. Let us grab that and that and drop it in place. So one of the nice things about the uh, the MegaScan Studio is that once you have a repository set up and you actually drag and drop the uh, scans into it, it's a simple matter of just opening up the materials again, and then you can just apply whatever you want it directly to your, uh, your little scene. And you can see this is actually tiling one by one. Uh, for those of you guys who are curious, we do have two by two. And this is meters, by the way, two by two scans. Um, and we have plans for four by four meter scans and potentially and don't quote me on this, but potentially, if we can finagle it into, into functioning correctly, we might even have 8x8 eight eight meter scans in the future. I cannot give you a determined time for that, or even if it's possible right now. I've, all I've been told is it's theoretical. So we may see it. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Mixer, we actually have a tutorial on the site as well. But I'll go through some of the basic features of it while I'm trying to get this look for, that I want. And again, this is what I want here. So I need some rocks and I need kind of a lightish orange color. Now what I could do here is sample this to get the albedo value that I want. The problem is there's light hitting this and that means it's going to be probably 20 to 30 percent darker than what you actually see here. So I'll just eyeball it myself because it's going to take the same amount of time either way. So I'm going to change this to kind of a yellowish color with a little bit of orange in it. and Push it down a little bit more and then push these two together. Now you can kind of see that this does not match this dirt and this rock do not match one another at all. They do not come from the same area and it stands out. So it's even worse when you change it to kind of a blue sky environment. It, it stands out even worse. One of the nice things about Mixer though is the ability to actually change the albedo values on the fly. So I can actually open this up, go to my lower layer, and paste in this information just by pasting the hex value and that matches up almost perfectly. And if you switch to the albedo view, which is up here, you can actually see that there's not too much of a difference between these two textures now. So it almost looks like they belong to the same area. Now, in the reference that you saw, there actually is no, um, there's very little grass. There's only in certain patches. So this is something I probably want to mask out. But for now, we can leave it alone. It's not really a big deal. And I think it kind of adds some character to it. So if we switch back to the PBR mode, you can see that I've got a pretty decent look so far, but this does not match the same intensity nor the same value of this. So I'm actually going to mix these colors a little bit better and try to get something more vibrant out of them. And then some of these things don't lend themselves to albedo adjustments, so you kind of have to finagle it a little bit, but in the end, I think some of the uh, results you can get out of it are just absolutely phenomenal. Actually, I forgot to copy that. There we go. Hey Linus, what's going on in chat, man? Uh, nothing much right now. We have the uh, the standard questions of what uh, what specs you're running your system on. Oh well, that's that's pretty <laughs> pretty simple. So my machine is a uh, GTX 970, four gigabyte. It's a if you want to know the specific manufacturer, it's from EVGA. Uh, I've used them forever, so I stick with them. I've got a um, an Intel i7 uh, 6700K. And I think it's a 4 gigahertz processor, and I've got 32 gigs of RAM. So I've got a pretty decent machine. Uh, not top of the line, but not bad either. So um, that generally makes a lot of this stuff. What's that? We have some questions about 
upcoming features as well. Uh, sure. Somebody wants to know if there is a uh, color picker planned. Color picker, as in, could we get uh, some more clarification on that? Like what we want as to in, do? You know, when you're blending your textures together, you just, instead of copying hex value, you just click on the other texture and... Uh, you know, oh, just sample the value from it? Yeah, yeah. That actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, so we are very, very open to suggestions on how to improve the tools. So if you do have ideas, the best place to put those would be in the Quixel Live support group or in the Quixel tools group. Probably support, um, but tools is fine too. It's not specifically a support query. Hey Linus, could you drop the, uh, the links for those two in there just in case anybody uh, is unaware? They should all know because I did advertise this only in the group, but just in case someone else was you know, not part of the group and actually popped in. So I've got a decent base. This isn't too bad. But as you can see, when I press the T button, it is very tiled. So what we need to do is find ways to mask that together. Now currently, Studio does not have the ability to paint in custom masks. So if I wanted to go in here and paint out the grass and whatnot, I couldn't be able to do that just yet. It's one of those things that we're kind of planning on. So as we continue refining the tools, you'll see things like that come up. And you'll have, <laughs> you'll have a lot more combinations with which to do things. But right now, you can make almost anything you want with pretty much any combination of texture you can think of. And it's amazing what you can do with even just two or three, because uh, you can keep sampling the same thing over and over, rotating it, uh, changing the offsets um, to get a different look each time. And actually, I want to make this a little bit less glossy, too. Same with the other one, because this stuff is not very shiny. In fact, it's very dusty. So. I'm going to play with changing the albedo values later on. If I can't get the exact look I want out of Studio, what I'll end up doing is taking this into Photoshop and kind of doing some hue adjustment layers to really fine tune it some more. But for now, that's just because I, I like to have complete and total control over everything I do. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist, but I do have specific ideas that I only get if I'm using a specific tool. Then again, I kind of use Photoshop as a crutch too, so who knows. Uh, so yeah, now that I'm actually going through and I'm adding some more stuff to this. And you can see it's really responsive. I mean, this is something you can easily just change at any point in time. Raise, lower these layers, and change the radius. Change the amount of detail that's in these textures to kind of sharpen them up or uh, change the transition points. Uh, change the opacity so they kind of sink in and sink out. It's it's just... I, I love this. It, it blows my mind how much harder it was to do this even a year ago. Like, this is the golden age of texturing, I'd say. It's just going to get better from here. So I still need to copy the color layers because this is going to be the exact same material. So Kiri has an interesting question here. Um, he says, I hope you don't mind me asking, but how come Studio is not free and requires the, uh, the subscription? Because Studio right now, as it stands, cannot work with anything but the textures directly from Megascans that I see. So unless you actually have a Megascan subscription, there's not much you can do with Studio. Um, oh. We do have the potential idea of making it a separate tool going forward. Um, I can't comment on whether or not that would be paid or free. Um, but I can say that there are plans potentially in the works for making this a standalone tool outside of the Megascan service that you can then take your own textures into. Once I'd imagine once we worked out some more of the issues with it, I mean, there's not too many that I've seen. It's pretty stable. Um, but once we've kind of resolved everything and we're satisfied with what it does, what it's capable of, and we have a definite roadmap towards other things, I think we're going to see this become a separate tool. If it doesn't, well, you know, it doesn't. But there's a good chance that it will. So yeah, no, Curie, the um, the the, the uh, studio does not currently work with uh, with custom imported textures. That is something that's being worked on, though. Now, in fairness, it kind of does if you you, you can know get it what to you're work, doing. Yes. If you know but what you're not doing, officially. yes. But if you know what you're doing, you can do it. But if you don't, basically, there, there's a quick workaround where you can download a material, a mega scan. And then just open the mega scan images up in Photoshop and replace them with the custom materials that you want to use, and then save them under the exact same name. So it's it's a very workaroundish thing, but it can be done. But there's no official support. Yeah, it's it's kind of a do it at your own risk kind of thing. Like if you want to play with it and have fun, go for it. We can't stop you, but uh, it's definitely not supported, and there's no way to really give you support for it if something does go wrong. 
Force VFX is asking how to get his sips into the studio. Sips. Now, the, when I hear uh, when yeah. I hear sips, I'm thinking of two different things because I do, in my other job, I work with a lot of military vehicles, and when I hear sips, I'm thinking of combat identification panels. Can you be more specific than that? <laughs> I would assume he means the zip folder. Oh, zip! I heard sip. Um, so, what was the question again? How does he get his zip into the studio? A zip into the studio. So basically, what you do is you actually. I would go... assume he's asking about the bridge. Eh, well, zip is the same thing in, in either program. So my library, my repository essentially is my B drive. And under that, I have a library called Texture Library. And under that, I have a folder called Mega Scans. And inside of that, and I'll actually show it to you. What I do is, one second, I simply drag and drop zips directly into it. And then what ends up happening is that the studio will actually read it on the fly. So if I was to go to megascans.se and like, let's say I grab a random, I don't know, let's find something in here I can toss in. It's pretty unique. This is actually a pretty good material. We'll grab this one. So I want this. I'm going to then say I need to work with this right now. I need hay for whatever reason. So once I'm done downloading it and it's finished being put where it's supposed to go, all I need to do is then take that file right here, drag it into my Megascans repository, which I'm sure there's an easier way. You could probably find like a, a Mega, or not a Mega, but a, a user script if you have a, a browser that allows you to do that. Like I use Opera, so I can use user scripts essentially to do different things on my, my site. If I can actually find a way to force the browser to take downloads from megascans.se and put them into a specific directory, that would be awesome because it would just remove the extra step of moving a folder or moving zips from a folder. But once I've moved You that, don't need to move the zips from the folder. Yeah, but I like to do that because I want to have it in a specific directory. That's just me, though. Sure, so sure, it doesn't have to sure. be there. You could put it in your downloads directory or say you wanted everything to download specific to, specifically to that particular directory, you could do that too. However you wish to go about it, there's a ton of different ways to do it. But then... I now have that material I downloaded in my library. And I can actually filter these things out by rock or plants or construction equipment, like the train gravel you saw in my Unreal scene, for example. So now I have that hay once it's done loading the textures from the zip. And now it's in there. This actually might even be good to, to keep in this texture, too. Um, there's a little bit of an accent. The chat wants you to uh, share your download points with them. My download They're points? Very jealous. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have 982 points right now. <laughs> so I, I have quite a few. There you go. So, uh, you know, it's it's not just for fun. It's also for doing things like this so that you guys can see what's cap you know, what the software can do and, you know, watch me uh, <laughs> make a fool of myself occasionally. So, uh, but that being said, uh, you can pretty much press T at any point in time to see what this texture is going to look like from a distance, or as in as we call it, tiled. Um, we are very like really working hard on finding ways to remove tiling. A lot of that can be done by simply adding more layers to your uh, your stack here. And by the way, at any point in time, you can actually take these and move them around. And so it's completely non-destructive how you want to do this because it's all height map driven, and it calculates almost instantly you can get a completely different look without too much extra effort. So, I mean, this doesn't look too bad, but it's still not as orange as I want, so I might actually have to play with this a little bit more. So what I'll do is turn off these height maps and try to get this to match the image a bit better. So at this point, I'm just going to give up on trying to eyeball it, and I'm just going to take this into Photoshop and just sample the color. So. One second. There we go. That's probably a good color right there. And then reduce this down to that. I see some uh, some users talking about problems they're having with downloading the mega scans and whatnot. I would say go to the Quixel Live Support Forum and ask your questions there. Uh, our staff is ready 24-7 to, to answer any questions that you yeah, have. Yeah, I would love to help you guys out with that right now, but that is unfortunately not something I can currently do. Um, yeah. This definitely looks a lot better, way more accurate. Um, but, I mean, we do have a very uh, responsive support team. 
Um, if you post in the group, we will get you a question or get your question answered as quickly as we can. Um, so don't hesitate to use the live support group at any point in time. We try to be as uh, responsive as possible. Um, unfortunately, with any software, there's always issues you'll run into, so we do our best to try to minimize that, but there's only so much we can do as a small team. But, I mean, I have to say, while I'm working on this, it's fantastic and phenomenal that there's so many people in here looking at this, that uh, that you guys are, like, part of this community with us. I mean, this is seriously the best job I've ever had. Like, it is so much fun to sit here and talk about stuff that people actually understand, because I'm so used to, like, working with people who would never understand a, sing I'm, like, a single thing I'm talking about here. Like, what's a texture? How do you, what's a height map? How do you, how, uh, albedo? What is that? Like, being able to talk about this stuff and people understanding everything I say is just mind-blowing, because, like, a couple years ago, that wasn't even imaginable. <laughs> so... It is, uh, it's, it's great that you guys are here. Um, I do apologize for anybody who's having issues. We'll do our best to get you sorted out. Um, but in the meantime, let's see what we can do with the tools that we do have currently. Um, so I'm going to try to blend this together a little bit better. And there we go. Whoa. Now, Honestly, I, as I've said before, I have nothing but gushing praise for this tool because I've made environmental textures quite a few times. I've done it with Endu, I've done it with Dedu, I've done it with other tools. This is by far the easiest way of doing it that I've seen. And I absolutely love being able to just quickly get an idea out there because I, I've had people tell me in the past, in, in the past couple of weeks even, that once Megascans came out, they're afraid that everything's going to look exactly the same. And... I guess I've I've heard the same things from people that I've met in my life who were primarily like old style painters, people who used to work with oil painting, for example, and who would never consider using a canvas that was digital. So when Photoshop came out and became way more prevalent, uh, and people started using it for all sorts of amazing uh, paintings and, and photo manipulations and textures and everything else, I, the, one of the common things that I heard was, well, everything's going to look exactly the same because there's no skill involved in being a digital artist. But as you guys all know, being a digital artist is a skill in itself. And being able to take the inputs that you have, be it your own hand painting something or a photograph that you've cleaned up yourself or anything else, and then turning that into something completely unique that only you could have done yourself, that is a skill. And that is a really, really valuable skill because there's only a handful of people out there and the billions of people in this world who can do what we're currently doing. Um, so I, again, I, I find it amazing that I'm surrounded by people who enjoy this as much as I do and that actually want to hang out here and, and look at this. So, I mean, by all means, when you guys make your own stuff, if you have a current subscription, please share what you've made with us on the Tools Group and on ArtStation, Twitter. I, I help run the Twitter feed on um, twitter.com slash quixeltools. So if you have something awesome that you want to share with us, I will gladly retweet it. Uh, we are very much about you guys. As long as you're happy, we're happy. So by all means, like just show us what you got, because we want to see it. Um, so for the most part, I, I think I'm pretty happy with what I got. This isn't the, the best texture possible, and I may have to go back and do some other stuff. But I don't want to stick on this one too much. So I'm going to save this and make a new one. And we'll call this one, what do I want to start on next? Let's try, ah, here we go. So this white, sandy, rough dirt with a black bear paw print in it. We're not going to get the paw print in here. That's just not going to happen. But we can try to emulate this look. Uh, so I'm going to try to work on this one next. And we'll call this... Uh... I have a question from John Rose 81 here. Sure. He's asking, how can a layer fall into the grooves of the displace map in a lower layer? For instance, cobblestone with dirt or moss between the stone. This seems to be more about displacing with a fractal map instead of the displacement map. That is an interesting question. How can a layer fall into the grooves of the displacement map in a lower layer? So could you give me a, a more specific, like, um, I'm trying to find a way to visualize what you're talking about, and it's, I think... He said here, for instance, cobblestone with dirt or moss between the stones cobblestone with dirt and moss between the stones. Okay. Well, here we go. Let me add a... Uh, I should have some cobblestone in here. I do not. Let me go grab some from the site. Here we go. So this stuff should work. Everybody's seeing this texture, <laughs> but we'll use it again. It's a good example. 3D mega scans cannot be added into Studio yet. No. Not Studio is only yet. for surfaces. 
mm. at the moment. Currently, you are completely correct. We cannot add any 3D assets into this, but we are working right. towards that. We're absolutely working toward that. So let me go back to my Megascans folder and drag and drop that particular texture into it. All the JPEGs. I think I have EXRs on this one, actually. There we go. So back to the studio. There it is. OK, so he wants to see cobblestone with dirt and moss in between. So you can actually see how it functions here. Since this is actually above the construction gravel, the threshold determines how it actually functions. So the height map, since these rocks are actually higher than the dirt layer itself, they're actually pushing through and really kind of defining that this is a specific look. Like if I wanted to make this look like actual paved cobblestone, I could even go as far as adding another texture into here on top of the stone, like a concrete. If I have a, you know what, let me go grab a concrete too. I, lo I love that you guys are giving me challenges and stuff that I would never normally think of. Um, Bloodbroach is asking if there's a public roadmap available for the uh, Quixel products. Mm. I know we used to have one. I don't know if that's available anymore. For Sweet, we did. Uh, I believe yeah. we have a Trello roadmap as well. Um, I don't have the link on me right now, but I believe... Actually, it's in uh, Polycount. Could you uh, toss the Quixel Suite Polycount link to them, please? Sure. I'll have to Google around for that. It's just polycount.com, and then you go into the technical talk subforum, and then go to the Quixel Suite subforum. Simple as that. It'll be in there. I have, it's a, one of the pin threads that I put in there. So, like, if I wanted to make this like a plaster cobblestone, right? So I go in here and add this in between the stones themselves. Now, right now, you're going to see that this defaults to from below. Now, you can change that to from above as well, so it'll actually apply to the top of these rocks and flatten them out. See how that functions? It, definitely not what you wanted to see. So from below would probably work pretty good. And you can change the radius on this as well. Thank you, uh, Packerman and Oblique, for for dropping those links. They were way faster with that than I did. Yes, fantastic. Thank you. And then if I wanted to add a moss to this as well, let's see. I should have something in here. This will work. OK. And then drop that down a little bit. Okay, and then what I want to do to the stone is kind of play with the height values just a little bit and reduce the frequency. Now this is kind of a weird mishmash of stuff, but it actually kind of works. Um, now if I wanted to go a little bit further, I could even take the stone itself and use the mossy grass stuff, whatever this is. They say it's dirt, but it looks like fungus dirt to me, personally. Uh, I can actually change these rocks to that same value. Oh, wow. That is slimy dirt. <laughs> that is really gross. I have That brings back fond memories of growing up in this state, let me tell you. Uh, let me do that to the, this gravel, too. It's just for Just for the giggles here. Oh, I would not want to walk on that. That is some straight up swamp algae. Yeah, that uh, that looks like the stuff that's in my retention pond on the street. <laughs> Digital is just asking if you could insert big rocks on the ground that you're working on. Um, if you're talking about like mesh rocks, no, you can't do that yet. But if you have a mega scan of big rocks, then yes, absolutely. You can so for smack that in there. For whatever reason, my computer is now starting to have issues with this particular scene. This is a lot of textures to blend simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is turn on a tweaking ground, or sorry, tweaking down sample. So I'm going to set it to level two, which should actually speed it up significantly. See, it looks a little goofy while you're working, but it allows you to quickly iterate and change things on the fly without having to worry about your system keeping up. Um, this does get more expensive to run as you add more materials, so keep that in mind if you start running the uh, performance issues. I know that we're looking into improving the performance. Uh, again, this is these are 4K textures, and there's seven per layer, so seven times four, and <laughs> that's like what 21, if I'm not mistaken. I I'm terrible at math on off the top of my head, so feel free to laugh. Don't at ask me, man. Don't ask you. I asked you though. Don't ask me. Why? Why can't I ask you? Math hurts my brain. Well, yeah. It, that's that's true, except for geometry, right? We're all good at that. <laughs> well, I, that's our job. Yeah, exactly. 
So, now you can actually improve the sharpness of this. Gross. Man, I'm tired of looking at this. This is so nasty. Let me change that back to what it was. Uh, something a little bit more gray. Uh, do we have a duplicate feature in for the uh, the layers yet? There's some questions That's about that. That's a good question, actually. That is a really good question. I do not believe you can currently duplicate them. But if you know which layer you were working with, it's as simple as just adding another one to it. And sure. They, they were mentioning wanting to retain um, the options set for the uh, the previous layer. That's a great idea. We'll have to pass that one on. If you guys, uh, like I said, if you see anything in here that you do want to improve in the tools, please let us know in the live support group. We can forward that on. Teddy will take a look at it. Um, I know Teddy is like really 100% on wanting to get as much feedback as we possibly can. We've been getting overwhelmed with feedback and we're thrilled by it because it's so nice to hear what people think. Like, be as brutal and honest as you can possibly be because there's no other way these tools are going to become as good as you want them to be unless you tell us what you want to see out of them. So keep that in mind, if you would. So. As far as moss and, and stuff goes, you can kind of see how you can get these rocks to work with it. This may not have been the best texture, so I'm actually going to look for a different one to try to blend. Now, on the actual website, you can also use tags and whatnot to search. Now, there's different types of rocks that you can choose from. Let's try getting rid of that tag. Another question from Rick Nick here. Um, in Studio, you select in what grid tile you want to work with, but can you change the tile size on separate materials? Not currently, but that is coming. Soon. Trademark. <laughs> Doesn't sound as funny when you when you have to say it out loud. But close enough. That is a lot of 3D assets, man. Ooh, you know what? Let me go back to that uh oops. That gravel that I was just working with. That might actually work for this too. So let's get rid of that and that. Just get rid of all the things. There we go. Now, if you guys are wondering, this is actually the same exact uh, gravel that I'm using in this little railroad environment. Oh, uh, like it's got a little bit of a difference, though. I'm using uh, some lerps and some hand-painted vertex masking and stuff to get the oily appearance on it. So uh, Jonas is ask, uh, asking here if uh, we're going to be seeing the process of you putting these materials into Unreal. I could actually do that. I do have one that's already done. Let me actually just load that up for you. Uh, All right, cool. I've seen a few people ask, uh, showing interest for that. This one might take a moment or two to load. This is a, this is actually the uh, pine needles ground texture that I need to add into that environment anyway. Uh, there's no simple way to add these textures into Unreal other than the traditional method, which is importing them directly or drag and dropping them. Now you can kind of see, this is what our forests here in the state look like. <laughs> this is 100% what the ground looks like. It is covered in dead forest. Forests dead pine needles with some grass here and there growing through it. This is pretty much all it is. I can actually go into Unreal and add this right now. Um, so I do have the exports. It should be in my exports folder. So yeah, here in Sweden, we call that a savanna. You don't call it a savanna. Don't, no, don't, don't pretend. Stop it. You're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> it's have not a, a savanna. Here in Sweden. You do I not have know. savannas. That's in Africa. They're everywhere. No, they are not. Everywhere. They are not. Yeah. No, I they're not. You. Stop I lying. Promise. Stop it. Shut up. <laughs> All right, let me go in here and add a new folder for this. You know what? I'll actually let you guys see what I'm doing. And rename this. And... Uh, there is currently no way to import your own HDRI uh, for for lightning into uh, lightning lighting into this, the studio. Not currently, but that should be a feature that's coming as well. They're asking about octane imports as well. Um, I we have am, bridges being worked on. Yes, for we do have. Everything. We do have that. I am not an offline renderer guy. Unreal is my no. home. I cannot advise anyone on offline rendering. The last time pretty, I touched pretty much uh, every offline renderer you can imagine, we have bridges working. Yes, or being worked on for those. And for so, those of you who use Cinema 4D, that is definitely in the pipeline. We are definitely working on that. <laughs> I cannot advise you on Cinema 4D. I do not use it. I am a 3D Studio Max slash Photoshop slash Unreal slash every Quixel tool imaginable kind of guy. I God, I love you, Jonathan. I'm glad somebody does. <laughs> All right, so I've got these materials in here, and what I'll do is, you know, actually I should put that back. I will create a basic material out of this so you can see me work with it. And you know what? It doesn't make much sense to cover it up so you can't see what I'm doing. 
Now, normally I would have channel packed this, but I don't think anybody wants to see me copy and paste stuff in Photoshop. So, I'll go ahead and set this up. And I, I cannot work unless these things are all on a straight line. I have to have these spaced out exactly the same way. It drives me nuts if they're not. I don't know if anybody else is the same way in these grid environments here, but it oh, it has to be I'd the right be way. the exact same way. Yes, so you feel my pain then. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So you I should just... see my really complex shader networks when things start getting crazy. I freak out because there's oh, yeah. no way to organize those. Yeah, it's, it's just like a, it's like a, a plank stuck in like the back of your... <laughs> you, know, you just got to pull it out, you know? Okay, so for those of you guys who don't work with Unreal, I have to set these compression settings correctly. Otherwise, this will come out incredibly bright. So I'm going to set this to masks for no sRGB uh, because this is a linear texture, not an sRGB texture. I need to do the same thing for the other textures as well. So saving this and closing it out. This should have already imported as a normal map, which it did. Sometimes it doesn't. I've seen people come bring these things in, and it does not look like a normal map at all. It's got, like, gigantic red blotches in some parts, so Unreal thinks it's not a normal map. So when you actually uh, go to load it in, it's not compressed correctly, and you throw it in your mesh, and it's got seams and stuff all over it. So something to keep in mind. So roughness. Okay, so that needs to be set to masks as well. And then... Are the mega scans one to one from Studio to say Arnold or V-Ray? That is a Billy question, and we do have a, a new hire. They are for the ones that we have bridges built in for, and for the ones that don't currently have bridges, they're being worked on. But yes, for the but, bridges that are actually in there, they should be one to one. Yes, but if you want uh, specific info on that, you can actually reach out to Billy. How do you pronounce his last name? Because I really don't want to make a fool of myself. Lundeval. Okay, so I'll let you say that because I can't say it correctly right now. Billy Lundeval. Yes, you can talk to Billy. <laughs> Billy will get you the information you need on Arnold. That is Billy's house. That's where he lives. If, if he could live on a street named Arnold, he probably would. So, this is all set up. I may actually have to come in here and maybe push this a little bit more. Uh, for those of you guys who are not familiar with Unreal, uh, even though you add an AO map to it in here, you don't really see it. So what I like to do is take the... I'm going to have to get back into studio in a second because we, uh, we need to work on Jonas that. Jonas is asking again if you're going to be importing the, the height map at all. Uh, not currently. Uh, aren't you the one that said don't use the, uh, the height map for terrain because it makes it go completely like horrible? Um, which version of Unreal are you on right now? Uh, pff, hell if I remember. 4.12? Yeah, probably. They actually fixed that. Well, they didn't fix it, but they, they vastly improved it with fixed the, uh, the recent... Fixed it, right? Yeah. yeah. They vastly improved it with 4.13, so it's actually doable now. But for, for terrain, it's a little bit iffy to, to use tessellation. Okay. Fair enough. If you're on 4.12. If you're on 4.13, it's, it's not that much of a problem. Anymore. Right. So what I need but to do here do that now. is actually blend these two textures together. Um, so get the AO map to actually work with the texture itself to give it some more definition. So this is on a parameter, so I need to actually create a material instance of this so I can see what I'm doing. So save that and close this out. It's the same thing I did to these um, these rocks here as well. I hope I didn't just break something. Ah, whatever. I can fix it. It's no big deal. And then go back to this terrain, create an instance of it. I can't wait for Unreal to decide to start compiling 4,000 shaders and just oh, yeah. working that, your PC. Isn't that the best? I'm not going to let it, it do is, that, though. So I love it. Right now, one of the biggest problems with with this, and Billy will tell you otherwise, like, don't add AO to your albedo texture. It's not the way it's supposed to work. Well, you guys can tell this looks flat. This is flat. Even though it has a normal map in it, which you can see, it is flat. It needs shadows. You're not going to get that any other way. So if I come in here and adjust the AO map, I can actually get some more strength out of this. Now, perhaps using the shader that I built for this probably isn't the right one. I may need to play with it some more later on. But it actually worked really well on the, on the rocks, but it's not working on this one. Uh, it looks like crap. It may even if you want to go really advanced, um, if you're using something like the POM shader or the tessellation shaders, neither you're of going which... to be very much taking care of that problem. Yes, but neither of which work on this terrain, as you said earlier, unless yeah, you're changing yeah. your tune now. So anyway, we're getting out of here, back to the studio. Um, I'm just seeing some people questioning. Yeah, definitely. So when you add all the maps together that this kicks out, um, 
which if you go to the default metalness, which is what I work with generally, the cavity, roughness, normal, displacement, AO, all that blah 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 stuff. Actually, you know what a good place to load this into would be tool bag. Let me load that up. Projects. By the way, my new um, favorite insult to someone. Calling them a tool bag? Mm -hmm. You better not call me that. Well, right now you're kind of a tool bag. I'm not a tool bag. You're, you're no, utilizing no, a tool I'm, bag. I'm using it, but that doesn't make me one. Mm. I guess I need a new term then. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that's the same material that I had when it's actually set up correctly. <laughs> so this actually has the cavity map, the AO map, and all the fun stuff in it. And this is all stuff that Studio kicks out for you. Um, you can kind of see it. Ooh, that's gross. I was going to say, you can kind of see it if I had less intense lighting. Um, but if I turn off the AO map, for example, it won't be a huge difference on this one, but the cavity map will be. So that really kind of brings it out, gives you the depth that you need to, to make these things look good. Um, and this is actually up on the uh, the ArtStation account that I use for a lot of the Quixel work that I do. So if you wanted to, to see this thing in Sketchfab, for an example, uh, you can spin it around there. I kind of like the, the Marmoset tool bag view a little bit better than the one in Sketchfab. Uh, but then again, there's a 15 meg upload limit for ArtStation, and the viewer exports on there never really look all that great to me. At least when I upload them. Other people seem to have some kind of magic touch with it that I can't figure out. So this is an example of this stuff. And actually what I'll do is I'll leave this up and start replacing some of these textures in this ball so we can see what's being made and how it's going to look when we're finally done with it. Because what you see in here isn't bad, but what you end up getting is completely different in some cases. Not that this is not indicative of what you're going to get, but that it's lacking some of the other textures that we need to see. So let's make a new something. Uh, actually, I was, did I just save that a second ago? I did, didn't I? Nope, that's that one I didn't want. One second, guys, sorry about the wait. But yeah, Marmoset is fantastic too. If you guys don't have a copy of it, consider buying one. Um, they, they're really, really, really good. In terms of rendering, Toolbag 3 is on its way out now, right? Yes, I'm so. currently testing it, but I don't know if I have permission to show that, so I don't want to mm -hmm. get on their bad side. <laughs> so now I've, I've made a, a couple of textures of this thing. I'll show you like um, something else I've made as well. Something quick. It's probably not the best texture ever, but I mean, there's some wizards out there that I've seen that make amazing work with this tool. Uh, I don't know if I'm one of them or not, but I'll let you be the judge there. But uh, like just having like four different textures allowed me to create this. So you can kind of see that, like with these rocks here, the, the height map of the rocks allows me to blend in. Uh, this is actually concrete that I blended in, but I'm treating it as kind of like a hard dirt. And then when I bring in the mossy dirt from the other texture that we saw and use that to kind of plop over the, um, the rocks themselves and then add I love this texture, by the way, this wild ground cover, because it's got an alpha map in it. So as you change the threshold of it, it looks like overgrowth. It is phenomenal. So, runs a little slow, though. The more textures I add, the slower it's going to get. Um, but let's go ahead and start with a new one again. Um, actually, unless I had it loaded. Let me, I'm losing it here. I need to get some more coffee. Which one was it? Apparently I didn't even save it. Wow. Well, wow. lovely. There we go. What's going on in chat line? Is anything uh anybody making fun of me yet? <laughs> Everybody's making fun of you. Awesome. That's yeah. Like, like I'm the paid clown of Quixel. <laughs> Sweet. I have a few more questions. Uh about the Adam movie. Yeah, the um the mega scans were used. Oh yeah, wasn't that great? Yeah, those, those Unity guys really outdid themselves with that one. It's pretty sexy stuff. I was amazed that it was in Unity. That was yeah, I know. That was like blowing. that was something I would have expected out of like Epic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is just, I mean, it shows that you can pretty much. I think that like we're at a point where engines and whatnot don't matter as much as just your skill does. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you're gonna we have pay Bob people, Million here too. Uh, hey, thanks for streaming today. I've been wanting to see a workflow for Mega Scans before I make the plunge. I'm curious though. Can you scale textures, say you make the cobblestone bigger or smaller? Not yet, but that is coming. I believe. I think I answered yes. that earlier, but for those yes. of you who didn't hear, we are definitely planning to add that in. So, it's coming. You, you, you can scale textures, but not the individual layers currently. But it's, it's on its way. 
definitely on its way. Jonathan, thank you for doing the stream from from Scoot 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 Scoot, <laughs> are Scoot you, three five two. Are you making fun of Eric? Stop <laughs> it! That is mean. <laughs> that is horrible and mean. You should feel bad. You should totally yeah. feel bad. I don't feel bad about most things. Yeah, that's okay. Up. That's fair. You are a horrible person after all. Yeah, I, I'm an asshole. <laughs> that's why we love you, though. <laughs> okay. So, right now, I'm getting back to that other texture that I wanted to work on, which was this... Big... Interesting question here that you're probably going to want to show off. Thanks for cutting me off, buddy. I appreciate it. Did you tell us is asking if it is possible to add water? Oh, yeah, yeah. Water is super simple. Let me... uh. Here, we just had a hurricane come, or a hurricane come through here just recently. Uh, let me go ahead and make this look like it just rained. As soon as I get this to a point where I'm happy with it, almost there. So I need this to have more detail, and I need the radius to be a little bit less, and I also need to change a couple of other settings. I also probably need to change the gloss on this too. It's way too glossy. And if I can find a way to tighten this up, that would be pretty sweet too. That'll that'll work for now. Let me add a couple of other things to this uh, to kind of push it a little bit more. Let's see, some of that brown dirt would help too. Uh, there we go. This stuff will work. Damn it! That is the old texture from the beta. I don't know what I was thinking adding those in there. I guess I thought it was slick and thought I could get away with it. It shows me. Nope. You know what? I'm actually going to use the same texture from the base and then pop it right on top and then rotate and offset it so it's not exactly the same and then change the threshold a little bit. So even with the same textures, you can, you can still get a decent amount of variation out of it. And it being the same texture allows you to get some unique appearances to these. It's not like clone stamping in Photoshop, like for those of you who are kind of old timers and remember doing that. It is definitely not like that. You you have full fidelity as you're doing this. Nothing really changes uh, except for just getting a better look out of this texture. This is uh, black, isn't it? Or kind of dark brown. Okay. There we go. More like that. Now if I was just looking at it at this scale where it's just tiling by itself, this definitely doesn't tile very well. Um, but that's okay. I can use this as a like kind of a. If I added my landscape in Unreal, I can use this as kind of a what do you, what's the best way to describe it? Almost a a detail texture. Like I can have this main texture in the background and just kind of paint this in on top of it, just to pop in some special areas that I want this black dirt to pop up in. Um, mm. It doesn't have to be something that you would tile all over the place. In fact, I would recommend against that because the tiling is horrible. I mean, it's just in, looks... um, in the 4.13 release of Unreal, they added some more uh, noise nodes to uh, to assist in generating random kinds of noise, which you can use to blend that kind of stuff as well. Sweet. Yeah, it's really great stuff. So we'll just say that this rained, right? Like we we had a nice rainstorm come through in a, in a, just a minute here. I love this button. This button is sexy. It is a magic button. And mm -hmm. whoever came up with it, probably Teddy, is a magic person. Mm -hmm. So it it's <laughs> it's not hard to do it in DDU, honestly, to add water and stuff to things. But just doing it on the fly in here is pretty cool. You get way more options with this tool as well. You get you get all options for actually setting the depth of the water and all that kind of fancy stuff. Yeah, and the way it blends into it too. This is actually not as good of a looking mm -hmm. texture as I thought it would be. Go away. There we go. Back to what we had. So the water button. There you go. There is your water. It is now rained. But <laughs> this rain doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Let's say, let's try a couple of different things. Let's say it rained in the last hour. Okay. So the sun's out. It's starting to dry it out. But it's still kind of, you know, it hasn't completely absorbed yet or been baked off by the sun. But time goes on. Later on in the day, it's been out for a while, but since this is gravel and a rock, it has nowhere to go, so it's not going to sink into the ground at all. So as the time goes on, it starts to dry out, right? And then we change the gloss because it's starting to turn into mud because there's some dirt mixed into this, right? So this has been out here for a while. Definitely don't want to step in this. You'd probably fall, slip or something. <laughs> and as time so goes on... He's also asking, hang on. 
He's asking if if we're gonna get custom noise masks to blend with this water stuff. That actually, at one point in the beta, I think you could actually do that. Um, mm. Let's see if that changed. It used to have. I'm not saying that there, there's been a lot of requests for that, so I would be very surprised if that's not something that that will be be coming. Up. Yeah, I mean, this service is gonna live or die based on how much you guys like it. So, again, we are all about making sure that you're happy with it. So, you know. Just keep suggesting these ideas that you have to the support group, and we will make sure that Teddy sees them. And by extension, the people who work on these particular tools. Um, so, adding water is really not hard. You can change it at any point in time. And better yet, water is not just limited to, like, you can actually, I, don't know, I have two different thoughts in my head simultaneously. It's not just limited to being stuck in one spot. You can see me raising and lowering it. But also, you can, also, like, you can really see the depth changing as the textures pop out as this thing rises up. So as it gets higher and higher, it turns into a flat plane, but as it gets closer to the rock, you can see the detail starting to pop through. And if you want it to look like it's really flooded, you can even do this, uh, change the depth, and change the surface. So there's no depth to it at all. And then change the gloss, so that it looks like a nice bit of flooded water over, I don't know, actually it might need a little bit of depth to give it some kind of interest. And you can even change the color of the depth too. So if you wanted to make it white, for example, or actually it kind of looks like ice, doesn't it? Or hell, if you were hit, making like a beach or something, you could even make it green. Which, it may look like algae, but it, it's definitely not. <laughs> why, why are your beaches green? Oh, the water in them is. We have plenty of green beaches here in, in Florida. I would never want to bathe in green water. You've never been to a beach that has green water then. Does it give you superpowers? Uh, no, it's not radioactive. No. But it does have sharks in it. If you if you think that getting bit by a shark will give you superpowers. <laughs> so there, there, shark there, man. Yeah, shark man. So, and a, 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 like yeah, we, actually, to solid chat, we can adjust opacity as well, which has interesting effects as well, which is kind of cool. So I mean, there's just so many different things you can do with this tool, and holy crap, it's already been an hour. Yes, the water is a separate layer, and yes, yes, we've been going for about an hour. That's nuts. Well, we have half an hour left, so if you guys have any other requests that you'd like to see, I guess I, I, guess I can do my other stuff later on. Um, it's just more about what you guys want to do right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, the I don't want to name drop. I don't talk about other tools or anything else out there. There's so many fantastic tools you can use to make 3D art these days. But I have to say, I can't think of anything else out there that allows you to get what, what you've seen here in the amount of time that you've seen it in. Um, especially in a studio environment, being able to make height-driven textures that are scanned and photorealistic in literally minutes. And from somebody who has way more skill than I do, I'm sure that this stuff would look <laughs> significantly better. Um, but just, I mean, imagining the possibilities, it's like, I think we've gotten to a point where when I was talking about earlier with like your particular skill coming in mind, like like I almost want to treat these like Legos in a sense. Like each one of these scans is essentially a building block that you can then take into um, anything that you want to work with. And then how you determine they should fit together will then determine the inequality of the product. Um, I mean, because there's only so many times you can make a rock. There's only so many times you can make dirt. Um, Nobody is like I can't think of anyone who hasn't seen dirt a thousand times or or rocks or trees or something else and it's like I think it's time that we're finally starting to move past the tedious work and get to the end result faster where you can be more creative and focus on lighting materials shadowing composition all the things that make us artists um, I don't think and people may disagree but I don't think being an artist should just encompass busy work like making rocks and and dirt it should be an important part of the process and it should be something you have input on but it shouldn't be something that you have to shouldn't have to master building dirt to be an artist you know like I didn't see Picasso or Michelangelo painting dirt all of their career they made interesting things and they were able to use secondary elements like rocks and trees and dirt and whatnot to build a convincing painting or in our case, the people who work on AAA games, which I wish I was, but uh, some of you guys are. But you guys don't entirely focus on that either. A lot of it's set dressing. You make the tools to build the environments that you want to work with, and you get to the end result as fast as you can while maintaining a high level of quality. And I think this is a tool that allows you to do that. Um, and then, of course, this only becomes a an amazing tool 
if you guys give us feedback. So please be as brutal as you can, as honest as you can be, because we want this service to be the best thing out there. We want you guys to use this. We want you to enjoy it. We want you to like it and love it as much as we do. Uh, because this is a labor of love. We've put so much time and effort in our lives into this, especially Teddy. This has been a dream of his for a long time. Um, so that being said, um, yet another thank you for listening, of course. Uh, if you have any requests for materials you'd like to see, let me know and I'll grab it off the site and make something out of it for you. Uh, to answer metorphication, uh, the rocks are not meshes. They are um, they're displacement maps for the, um, the ground. So the ground is displaced. To, to actual geometry, but they're not they're not separate meshes. No, they're part of the texture. Yes, and the uh, of course the texture can actually be adjusted too. You can generate a height map essentially from what you see here, and that will determine the displacement and the program you throw it into. So like what you see here is what I would see in Toolbag if I was to export this out. Like if I just go and kick this out right now, we could see that. No active maps. I need to actually tell it to export something. There we go. Um, so no, the the water layer does not um, generate an opacity mask for the uh, the export into Unreal. Uh, the water that you put into the texture here will look the exact same way in Unreal. So it will just be part of the actual diffuse texture. Uh, if you want more specific painting control over that inside of Unreal, I would say that you're going to want to paint that via the shader inside of Unreal and just skip the uh, the water part completely. In, uh, in 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 studio, can't argue with that. With you here, why do I even need to talk? <laughs> I am yeah. I mean, I'm I'm amazing at everything. You you you're, you're, just the best. you're doing God's work here, buddy. Me? No, I'm not. You are. No, 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 I'm not. Whoa, it looks like crap. Give it a second. I'm not working at all. I'm UV mapping. Don't worry, this is going to come out into something in a second. Like that, that tessellation is gorgeous. I know, isn't it? It's amazing. Look at all that definition. Woohoo, golly. Hold on now. Almost down here. I just need to add the gloss map to it. Uh, Sku is asking if there's a faster way to go from the browser to the layers. They're so far away from each other. One second. I uh, don't know if we have any hotkeys for that, actually. I think there are. I think we have B for, for that. B and V? I'm not sure. I, it's, it's been a while. There you go. And this is way worse tessellation, isn't it? But actually, the scale of this was closer to that, so let's match this up. So one of the issues you can see here is that we actually have clamped displacement, so we now have plateaus. This is a known issue, and I believe it is being fixed soon. So. If you're having issues with that, just keep that in mind. That's an issue we do plan to fix. So well, Bob I, Million has a, another question here. Uh, sure. How far can you go with this? For example, I see a lot of natural earth-like textures and such, but could you, for instance, imitate Martian soil or Martian soil mixed, mixed with something from the moon? Basically, he's curious as to what the limitations are when it comes to what textures you can create. Pretty much your imagination, I would say. Um, mm -hmm outside of making metals and whatnot, which we don't have the ability to do currently, but in terms of environments, you can make almost anything you want out of these textures. I mean, heck, you can take this free texture here. Let me grab this one and add it into my library of stuff, and I'll grab a couple other things. If you want to see Martian environments, let me grab uh, some reference for that. Where the heck is that? Like, this is actually probably really easy to make because, I mean, the fact that it's on a different planet doesn't change much. Um, Rocks and sand. Yeah, it's the same chemical elements that you find here on Earth. It's just, I think uh, Mars sand has way more iron in it than ours does. So it mm. tends to have a reddish hue to it, which is mostly, if I'm not mistaken, it's rust giving it that effect, um, which rust isn't metal, so you can definitely get that look to it easily in here. So go back to the studio. And let me go back to my downloads folder and grab that texture I just downloaded. Which, where the heck did it even go? One second. Ah, there it is. Just 
kind of hit itself in a different folder. Yes, who wants to know if we actually have um, a, a PDF or a hotkey list available somewhere? I'm not uh, sure about that myself, actually. Yeah, off the top of my head, I can't. I think it's probably an FAQ on the on the actual Megascans that I see website. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make a new texture. All right. So we're going to add that cracked stuff that I just could have sworn I just downloaded. it. Eh, maybe I didn't put it in the right spot. Whatever, we'll do it with something else instead. Add this in there. This is kind of like a lightish pink color. Actually, this probably wouldn't work here. This has plants in it, and as far as I'm aware, Mars does not have plants. <laughs> so what's, this is probably closer to what we'd want. Yeah, just simply changing the albedo value here is enough to get a Martian appearance. This is more of an orange color based on the Wikipedia picture. It's nice having three monitors because I can just look at the left one while I'm doing this. And change this to that. That's actually not far off from what it looks like. But we can yeah, add more to it. Me. Let's say we want to add this in there too. Damn it, that is the up. same thing I keep falling for every single time. I am making such an ass of myself. Get some <laughs> sand in there. I Give, give us some nice sand. How about some pebbles instead? No, no, no. I want yes. some, I want some no. nice. No, not what you want. Pebbles. Wait, there was, there's no one that's gone to Mars and laid down pebble floors. Well, that guy from the Martian did. <laughs> Am I the only one who did not like the Martian? I haven't even seen it. I just saying random crap. No. Modification is asking about uh, cell shaded cartoony rocks. The, we had this uh, discussion internally the other day. Don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> no. They're, as, as, as he says himself, that's very much a, an engine thing. Yeah. And when you, it comes to making cartoony things, you're better off using just the standard modeling software such as ZBrush to actually design those things as the, the mega scans are very realistic. If you want realistic looking scans that are cell shaded, sure, you can do that using these things. Uh, you'll have to do a lot of you know, on engine side things to uh, to make it shade correctly, but for the more stylized stuff, you probably want to stick to your standard art. Uh, I need to take those two textures out of there. It is driving me up the wall that I can't select them. <laughs> <laughs> will Mega Scan only be for environments, or will there be some scans of skin, leather, fruits, human shaped work things? Now, this is a question I get frequently. Let me show you something cool. If we go to megascans.se, if you guys all open it right now, or you can just look at my screen, um, directly to the site, just hit the end tab to go directly down to the bottom. First wave we are currently on is jungle slash rainforest slash desert and wasteland biomes. The next one is going to be the Nordic biome with Australian lava, 3D trees, and foliage. I've seen the trees. They look phenomenal. Third wave is fabric, brick, tile, and wood. Fourth wave will be metal, plastic, surf, or... Uh, metal plastic and rubber and at any point you can request something billy will scan it if billy can't scan it he will find a way to do it i have asked him to actually scan me uh train rails like railroad rails because i want that specific type of rust on there and if you have any specific materials that you want scanned that you actually have access to um billy will take like he you can send stuff to him and he'll scan it i'm personally going to be sending uh sponges to him that i want scanned so I want some nice sponges. Now, you say sponges. Are you talking about ocean sponges or like cleaning? No, sponges? I'm talking about yellow bathroom sponges. Why do you want that? You know, I don't, like, don't even tell me. Just, I don't want to know. I just, I, I just want to make like, you know, you know how like you have fur and stuff on jackets. I, I, I want to just yeah. replace that fur with sponge. So, okay, fair enough. We can we can do that. <laughs> whatever you want to do I don't care um, I did see a comment that can we scan a cartoon that may have been what you responded to I think it's actually possible to if you scan... draw a cartoon and you send it to Billy he can scan it yes he can scan I'm pictures sure it's go into the library though yeah I don't know if it will but uh, you can scan pretty much anything that will fit into the mega scanner can be scanned uh, I mean hell we took the we took the mega scanner and put it on Eric Romberry's back and scanned him. 
Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, that's the skin texture currently available in um, in Didu. It's um, that's Eric's back. Pretty yes, gross. that is disgusting. Um, in <laughs> fact, I think every one of us should be scanned at the very least, like different parts of our bodies, so that we can not only say that we've. What was that phrase? Uh, get some skin in the game. I will volunteer my bum. If Billy wants to scan my bum, it's available to him. Sure. We should scan Billy's hair. Scan my hair? No, Excuse me. Billy's got better hair than you. Whoa! I'm out. I'm, I'm gone. <laughs> I... I think he actually did leave. Well, well good riddance. So, um, we got another 20 minutes left. If you guys want to see any specific scans or have any questions about the tools, I'm checking the chat. Um, by all means... Ask me anything related to the studio tool. I will answer whatever I can. If it is about upcoming stuff, I will answer as truthfully as I possibly can within the constraints that I have been given. Minus, you can stop pretending to be angry now. I am angry. No, you're not. No, okay. No, I was going to poke at you some more, but no. <laughs> uh, no, we're not doing mega scan groin pictures. That no, that's not going to happen. I can say that definitively, unless something changes that I'm not aware of. But I will have nothing to do with <laughs> scanning groins. Mega scan dick pics. <laughs> I was trying to avoid saying no, that on a recorded <laughs> chat. Thank you, Linus. <laughs> they, people thought that the internet could not become a worse place. Oh, here in Quixel, we say that's not true. Uh, <laughs> this is getting quickly uh, not safe for anyone <laughs> so spaghetti actually I think we are going to scan food too um, you know wasn't it like people calling someone a hipster for taking pictures of food what do you, what do you call someone who scans food <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to scan my ramen bowl and put, put it on Facebook well, this is what I ate today you know what it, I, there's um, so Pockerman is asking about the exporter being as nice as Didus. I would say, yeah, it's pretty nice. Actually, make it this Martian stuff in there uh, into uh, Marmoset instead of just moping around here and pretending that I'm not working. I am working. I'm, I'm doing stuff. Don't worry. Uh, we have some questions asking if the um, <clears throat> what the pricing of the uh, the scanner was to develop and if it is available for for hire. Uh, I know for a fact it is not available for hire. I also know for a fact that I cannot tell you how much it costs because even if I did know, I don't think I can tell you. Yeah. That is a incredibly proprietary bit of information. Billy, however, is very much available if you want things scanned. Yes. So, Billy will gladly scan for anything for you, so don't worry about that. I'd love to tell you how much it costs. I'm not even trusted with that information. And Except I, dick pics. I have access to almost everything... Quixel and I don't even know. Eh, shut up. <laughs> we're not scanning those. No, no, we're not. You're absolutely no, correct. And we are not doing that. We're not scanning that. Dude, that's a really cool texture. Let's grab that one too. That's Ooh, it has some like cracked sand. Uh, Martian sand. That's what it's called. Martian sand. Actually, let me find some sand in here too. Woohoo. If you're wondering why these things pop up, it's apparently because I auto-completed to sandstone, and I just want sand. There we go. Much better. Okay, so we can say the Martian was hanging out here with all the boot prints in it. I'm all over that. Ugh. What, does that offend you? The, 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 the footprints. The footprints offend me. Well... You'll have to just. Are you triggered? Is that what you're trying to say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm very triggered. <laughs> Hang on, let me go to Tumblr and complain about this. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Let's not let's not make this any worse than we already have. <laughs> One second, let me drag these in there. Okay, back to the studio. There is no. Uh, I think we actually have scanned snow. Uh, I did recall seeing Teddy messing around with snow scans, and I did see some. Yes, there is scan. There, there, there is snow. Bill, Bill, Billy and I have had this discussion. I'm currently building my Iron Forge environment, and I needed snow. So we're going to just say that somebody... <laughs> what is that writing? What does it say? Uh, well, it says the Martian was here. That's what it says. Modelisk Notha Jaw? 
That's in your funny elfish language, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So the Ich nur dal yeb. So the the Martian was writing on here. That's what happened. There we go. The Martian. Is that what they call him? Is that him? Is he the Martian? He's well, he might as well be now. That's all I know him as. But he's from Earth. Mm, yeah, but he lives on Mars. Does that make you a Martian though? Yeah. If I move to the US, do I become American? Yeah, if you're a citizen, you become an American. But how do you gain official citizenship on Mars? Uh well you're you're the first person there, so you've claimed it and it's now yours. Is that how it works? Sure. In this Does Neil Armstrong or whatever own the moon? Uh you know, did he plant the flag on it first? I'd say he does. Huh? All right, cool. In the name of America. Who has paid for him to go there? So <laughs> <laughs> if you, of course, if you believe that we went to the moon, I'm just kidding. We did. I don't know. The X Files still hasn't really covered that. I'm pretty sure Mulder even agrees that we went to the moon. Mm -hmm. now, come on, you don't remember that episode with that weird Martian guy's face, like taking over that one colonel? That That's really, true. That's that true. Really actually. bad episode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was so cringeworthy. I tried to skip it, and my wife like saw it, and she's like, "Why did you skip that one?" And I said, "It's you can't skip X Files episodes. That's yeah, not okay. we almost got away with it. Too. I almost did, and then she saw it, <laughs> and then she watched it, and she's like, hey, it wasn't that bad.'" And I'm like, "No, the effects were really, really bad." You know, they redid that. Can you too, show right? some of the plant grass from the dry grassland pack? I it looks like the downloads are textures, but seems like a model. Yeah, give me one second, and I will do that. Let me export this out, and we'll see what it looks like in Marmoset. Mars belongs to Matt Damon. All right. <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. I will never not think of him as that dude from Saving Private Ryan. What was his name? Private Ryan, I think? Yeah, it was Private Ryan. Yeah, that's who it was. I'm just being stupid. <laughs> Matt Damon is, to me, what he was in Team America. He was in that? Yeah. Don't you remember Matt Damon? <laughs> I do not remember. Oh no, it's Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Matt Damon. You know, uh, mattification brings up a really good point. If we could mega scan moon soil samples, you know, we could probably get in touch with NASA and see if that's possible. I know that they oh, still have some of the touch. samples from Apollo, uh, I think it was Apollo 11, wasn't it? So. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's true. That would be cool, actually. Okay, so back to Marmoset here. Let us change this. Yes, you want to send some moon dust to Sweden? <laughs> there might actually be some there. I think we sent it out to uh, quite a few countries. Huh. Kind of as like a goodwill. Oh, you know what? I should have put water on this thing so we could have done Total Recall. You, you've seen Total Recall, haven't you? Yes. Okay. I don't... I don't, I don't understand what you're trying to get at you know, oxygen you know, water you you just ruin everything man i'm, just, I'm, I'm sorry Jonathan, don't hit me <laughs> i never hit you no no we're, we're we're too far apart for that see look the martian's footprint uh, apparently he's grown extra limbs well on his stay so dude you don't know if mars is radioactive uh, you know, actually, considering the atmosphere is thinner, it probably is very lethal to live there without some yeah. kind of shielding. Dude's gone borked up. Bork. How would you actually say bork with the the uh, proper lettering in it? There is no proper lettering for Just, bork. It's got the, the O with the two dots. What would that be? Bork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's not as funny as I thought it was, but it kind of is. Which, fun fact, Burk is what we call a <laughs> jar from where I live, because we have a really stupid accent. You don't so have a stupid a accent. So a Burk is what we call a jar. You do not have a stupid accent. Okay, we were talking about yeah, the, the grass. You've never heard my Swedish accent. You want to demonstrate? And even then, I don't have the accent from, the you know, that people have where I live. One of those accents are absolutely disgusting. Couldn't be any worse than Cockney. They put a uh in everything. Even uh, the words that shouldn't have it. Uh, is that is that what it really sounds like? Uh, it yeah. couldn't be any worse than me. I've said uh no less than five hundred times this, the entire time I've been talking. So. <laughs> That's true. So we were talking. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, yeah, 
I have the height, at least. Uh, let's see here. So we were talking about the dry grasslands pack, yes? Yes. Okay. So Something apparently looks like meshes. What was it we were looking for in here again? I don't know. There was something in the gra dry grassland pack that looked like a mesh. A mesh. Like a As far as I know, all the grass are uh, 2D atlases. Yeah, the grass is all atlas So all this stuff here, for example. Yeah. Now, I believe uh, we actually took this stuff and you know, it was turned into 3D assets, like these uh, scatter sticks and whatnot. Which these are awesome too, because I believe they do come in as individual OBJs or FBXs, depending on what you want. And you can load these up into the Unreal Foliage Editor, and you can just quickly scatter them around and vary them dynamically to paste, uh, based on the, the normal direction of the terrain you're painting it on. So, but... it's great stuff. We're getting requests to uh, to scan Teddy. That would be pretty, pretty cool. Whether or not you could get him to agree to that would be another story. <laughs> hey, Teddy, does this uh, smell like chloroform to you? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you're telling me to not go to dark places. <laughs> it's, it's for the good of the company, Teddy. The, the people want you, but not you. They just want scans of you. Yeah, your nose hair. Oh, gosh. Better keep oh your... man, we need to scan some nose hair. But, I mean, you could Get use some good snot in there. You could use a lot of different things to emulate. Oh god. Yeah, but we won't have realistic snot. Oh, uh, that wouldn't be hard to make. Just get sick. Why are we talking about this? Because I'm creating characters with really detailed noses. Okay. So yeah, um, we're in the last twelve minutes. Everything uh, you see here is something you can access on Mega Sands. Nothing I've made is something you can't get yourself. You just have to have a subscription. Um, I, I wish I could share my subscription with you guys. You're all awesome people, but unfortunately, I like my job. I do not wish to. Well, no, fortunately, I like my job. I do not wish to lose it by sharing my credentials to download all this stuff. So um, we are going to be planning. Uh, speaking of Quixel news, we're going to be planning some contests coming up. Uh, if you guys have ideas for that, you're welcome to email them to me at jonathan at quixel.se. You can also send me messages on Facebook. Uh, one at a time, please. I know you can't coordinate across the world, but just try not to destroy my phone's vibration function. It'd be nice to know when somebody's calling me. <laughs> um, I think we should do a Star Trek themed one. Uh, we did that. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can stop opening up old wounds. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, we'll never speak of that again. Uh, drop some. I do not currently have any grass to show you, but I can show you. Well, no, that's not true. I have some stuff in here in Unreal. This is stuff made with the Mega Scans beta assets. So, and it was also done really quick in Max. Give Unreal a second to reinitialize here. There we go. So here's some grass that was made with some of the older scans, and this is something I whipped together really quick. I'm not entirely proud of it, but if you like it, that's cool. Um, Owen made these ferns. These are all scanned as well. I need to change the materials a little bit to make them more realistic. But I'd say they hold up okay. They probably just need some AO maps or something on them to pop them out a bit more, make them look more they interesting. They have unreal versions of that. I know they, um, Owen made a bunch of uh, yeah. unreal ferns. So he's, you can he's sent all this stuff to me for this scene, so I need to get in there and, and add that in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a... a something I, I hope we can all be pretty proud of when we're, well, I'm finally done putting it together uh, one of these days. I haven't had any time to do it. Every time I get home, I'm thinking, I'm going to work on it today, and then the support queries come in, and you guys come first, so I can't really work on stuff and yeah. when that's happening. So, um, yeah. So, uh, again, Quixel News, I'd like to work on a contest or two coming up. Um, maybe something Megascans themed. Um, maybe something you guys can use with those awesome assets that you downloaded with your free 50 points for having been a sweet customer prior to the day that we announced that you would get 50 free points. So, uh, to clear up any confusion, you do not get points for Megascans buying Quixel Suite after like last week. So, mm. it's just before that to clear up any confusion there. Um, that being said, uh, besides contests and whatnot, we're always doing something in the background. It may not look like we're doing something, but we are. 
Uh, I'm doing my best to try to stay in touch with you guys. It's becoming increasingly more difficult as my duties with this company continue to take up more of my time, um, which is a good thing. Uh, not as much for the community that interaction that I used to have. I used to run hangout sessions quite frequently, and um, <clears throat> I don't have as much time to do it as, as I used to, but I'll try to make the time for you guys. Uh, it's just tough to balance two jobs, uh, two kids and a wife, in <laughs> making everything kind of function, especially with a job like this one where I'm always on call. Um, but, I mean, you guys make it worthwhile. Uh, the questions and, and the community that you guys have and, and just being part of this is just really something special. It's like, I think it's like one of those, it's almost like Seinfeld, I'd say. Like, it's just one of those things you just can't recreate again. So I just want to stick with this as long as I can because I don't want to see, <laughs> see it happen again. <laughs> you didn't watch Seinfeld. Shut up. Yes, I did. What would you know about Seinfeld? I know, I, I know, I know, I know the Jerry. The, I, know, the Jerry. I know the Jerry's and the Georges. You're like, you're like those people that like talk to me when I'm riding my bike and you're like, how, how do you like the bike? Uh, well, it's not the bike. It is my bike. And how uh, young do you think I, I've seen Seinfeld? I, I've seen some Seinfeld in my time. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> oh, I know the Seinfeld. I, I know what is a Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll leave I've it seen at that. least two episodes. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, how long until the next wave? It says Stevie Ray underscore thirteen. I cannot give you that info. All I can say is soon trademark. When it's ready. When it's ready, soon trademark, soon copyright. However you want to go about saying it, we are actively working on getting this out as fast as we can. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see at least another wave out before the end of the year. That's a long time but we are also trickling in additional scans every week. I know Teddy has that as a high priority. Um, we're trying to find some time to get him to come and hang out with us too. If you guys uh, were there for the hangout session that I ran last time, you will s well, you would have seen that Teddy was in there hanging out with us. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what a hangout is, I'm not literally referring to just chatting. I'm talking about a specific uh, location on the Quixel site. Uh, which is hangout1.quixel.se and hangout2.quixel.se. Uh, both of those are places you can go and screen share, talk with people in the community, um, pretty much just see how awesome you guys are. Um, some of the best people I've met on the internet have come from this community. Um, met some lifelong friends so far that I think I'm going to be chatting with for a long time. Like you, Linus, even though I give you a hard time, Aww. you're a really good guy. So... Um, that being said, we are doing our best to get Teddy to be, you know, part of everything as well. And he wants to be out here talking to you guys as well. Um, it's just so difficult to find time to do anything these days. With how, like, this is a gigantic undertaking. I, I, I cannot stress enough that Mega Scans is a humongous thing. Mega is probably not even the right word. It should be like massive scans or something. These Giga Scans. Giga Scans. Uh, what's what's above that? Terra Scans. Petascans, something. Hey, let's not call them petascans, okay? Let's stay away from that. Oh, oh God, no! Oh yeah, so yeah, I didn't no. even think of that. I'm thinking of like like petabytes. Yeah, no, no. You're no. an awful person. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the grass scans look like they're at an angle. So on the website itself, if you do encounter issues with particular scans or something that you think should be fixed. If you go to the library and you select any scan that you have any concerns with, you can actually report that asset by clicking on this button. And that will bring up a little window that you can say, ah, I have one of those mechanical keyboards with the triggered or I hair see some writing keys. on that scan. You might want to report that. Yeah. So something like that. Just say what you think is wrong. Or in the case of Force VFX, who says the well, not build, but built. So, and we will put that into the queue. Take a look at it. Get it fixed and resolved. Um, this is, of course, very much a beta. So there are bugs to be expected. Things that are being worked on. Things that are being improved. This is the critical time where you guys have an opinion that has the most weight. Uh, the beta phase is the easiest time for us to fix anything. Uh, of course, we listen to you no matter what, but 
it's much simpler and much easier to fix these things now than it is to catch them later on before it snowballs into a bigger problem. Um, yeah, and as uh, Kev Cart, I guess that's how you pronounce his name, uh, as he mentions, this was actually in the Jungle Book as well, uh, which, if you guys haven't seen it, fantastic movie. The uh, jungle environments, if you know what to look for, you can see the scans in there. So um, the Disney artists and the guys that worked on that are like really good at hiding that, though, so you got to kind of look for it. But, I mean, I can't wait to see what's going to be happening next year. Um, we've made so much progress in the, just the past two weeks. It's going to be exponential growth from here on. And uh, Imagine seeing new faces coming up, uh, more scans, more environments, more everything. Uh, one more time before I sign out for the day, it's been fantastic talking to you guys. I've done my best to try to get to any and all questions I can think of. I'll try to make the next... Uh, the, the next stream a little bit more organized. Um, I think it's been okay, but if you have any suggestions on what to improve, uh, if you think my voice sucks, I do too. So don't worry. Um, <laughs> Jonathan, don't. You're, you're wonderful to listen to. I am not. I will uh, disagree with that completely, but if you think I do, that's fine. I respect your opinion. So, um, yeah. You're not so, using Notepad. Why would I use Notepad? Have you never watched the YouTube tutorials with the notepads? The notepad. And God, you sound like hey a, guys. Today you're doing, your, you're doing your best to impersonate like a grandfather right now, and you're driving <laughs> with, with the notepads. <laughs> you kids with your notepads and your quixels. <laughs> oh, back in my days, we painted every single grain on those textures by hand. That is actually what it's like talking to some people who have objections to mega scans. I believe we had yeah. a user that came in and said. I don't like mega scans because it makes this easier to do. <laughs> and to which I can only say, do you hate photography? Because it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Because you're taking pictures of an environment that you didn't build yourself. So are yeah. you saying there's no skill in photography or are you just saying that like back in my day, I had to go up two miles in the snow and blinding rain. <laughs> It's okay, Gramps. We're, we are in 2016. It is, it is current year, okay? So it's, it's okay to have technological advances that make our lives a little bit easier so that you can focus on the other things that matter, like setting up your lighting because no one's going to do that for you. Setting up your environments because even with all these scans to look at and work with, you still got to do some work. You can't just take these things and place them. It's not going to just look like this off the bat. You do have to put some work into it. And please, before I sign off, you guys, one more time, you are fantastic. I love this job. I love talking to you guys. I love working with you. Show me your art. I want to see it. Let me put this stuff up on uh, the Quixel Twitter account. I want to share what you make. Share it with us. Make some fantastic work. Go make things that other people haven't made before and use what what you have to do it because, I mean, ah. I can't put into words how much I love this. So yeah, we're going to sign off. Um, thanks so much for being here. We're going to try to do this some more. Um, I will make the time to make this happen. So if you want to know anything else, one more time, suggestions on what to improve so that I can make this better for you next time, let me know. Have a great evening. It has been fun. See you guys later. Good night, everyone.